Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Our night blooming series has bloomed three times this summer. In this video, let's enjoy the gorgeous flowers together. We will briefly introduce the plant, share our experience with growing them, and explain how to use its famous flower to make a delicious soup. Night blooming series is an epiphytic succulent plant in the Cactaceae family. Its scientific name is Epiphyllum oxypetalum. Epiphyllum means upon the leaf, and it references the strange way in which these plant's blossoms seem to emerge randomly from the edges of its leaves. The flowers are huge, elegant, and fragrant. The flowering period is extremely short. We all know that plants generally perform photosynthesis during the day absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. At night, they become like humans, absorbing oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide. But night blooming series, like most cacti, is different. During the day, it undergoes light reactions to release oxygen. At night, when the ambient temperature drops to the appropriate temperature, it absorbs carbon dioxide and continues to release oxygen. The plant essentially holds its breath during the day in order to minimize water loss in its normally hot climate, only releasing and absorbing gases during the cooler night. This makes light blooming cereals suitable for planting indoors, as it can improve your living environment. At the same time, these plants can also increase the negative iron content in a room, making the indoor air more fresh and pleasant. The scent of night blooming cereals also can sterilize and inhibit bacteria. While in traditional medicine, it is used to elicit effects when treating tuberculosis, like detoxifying and resolving phlegm. It is also used to clear away heat and moisturize the lungs as a an laxative and a detoxifier and for anti-inflammatory and sterilization purposes. To capture these qualities, once the flower has withered, we can make a delicious soup out of it. This dish can calm the mind, clearing away heat and relieving fever. While it nourishes the skin, reduces inflammation, and sterilizes. Since light blooming cereals present so many benefits, how should we plant it? Are they easy to grow? Based on my experience, I feel that these plants are very easy to grow. I usually water and fertilize them only when I remember to do so, and rarely take stringent care of it and yet it still thrives. Now let's talk about the planting and care of night blooming cereals in detail. Although the genus Epiphyllum belongs to the cactus family, these plants often have strong shade tolerance and are not tolerant of sunlight. They thrive in scattered light and needs to be shielded from strong light to avoid sunburn. Night blooming cereals makes a great houseplant, especially when placed in south facing windows where being filtered through glass will greatly dampen the sunlight's intensity. Make sure that you watch the plant carefully if you play outside in summer in order to avoid sunburn. My night blooming cereals stays in this south window all year round. It is growing well and has never been burned. These plants prefer to remain warm and have certain requirements for temperature. Epiphyllum plants thrive between 15 and 25 degrees Celsius. Their cold resistance is extremely poor, and they will soak a bit if subjected to very hot temperatures. These plants must be moved indoors in winter, and it is best to provide an environment above 10 Celsius. In summer, ventilation could be strengthened 
and it is best to prevent the temperature from rising above 32 degrees Celsius. Their growth will suffer if these plants fall outside of the ideal temperature ranges for an extended period of time. The water needs of light blooming cereals are similar to those of ordinary plants. When the soil in the pot is dry, just water it thoroughly, being careful not to allow water to accumulate in the pot. Good drainage is crucial for the prevention of root rot. On the other hand, an extended dry period may also damage the roots. After such damage has been sustained, their leaves may become dry and yellow. During the pig growing season, these plants must be watered frequently, and when the air is too dry, you may need to increase the ambient humidity. During the pig growth season and flowering period, the plant has a high rate of energy consumption, so the application of fertilizer is desirable. You can use both slow release and direct fertilizers, but it's important to avoid the over application of nitrogen fertilizers. This will cause your plant to get leggy and may stifle blooms. Night blooming cereals typically bloom from mid summer to early fall, so it's best to use a lower nitrogen fertilizer as this blooming period approaches. If your plant isn't blooming, then improper watering or fertilizing are the most likely culprits. Night blooming cereals can have a very leggy, awkward habit that makes it necessary to cut them back. Overly ambitious growth can be removed to both keep the plant compact and preserve energy for blossoms. Wayward leaves can also be trained back towards the main body of the plant. If you do end up removing growth, it is very easy to make cuttings. You can divide the cut sections, let them dry for a few days, and then leave them in slightly moist soil for three weeks. They will eventually root and will begin to develop into brand new plants. Be sure to avoid overwatering. These plants are not too picky when it comes to media or pot. Just ensure that the media is breathable, with decent drainage and enough organic matter to retain some moisture. A mix of humus, potting soil, and sand would serve well. We have ours planted in shredded bark, and it seems to enjoy that. Now that we have discussed how to grow these plants, let me show you how to eat them. This beautiful flower will open after sundown and wither by morning. Once it is limp, cut the flower off and start some water boiling. Remove the pistil and the stamens in the middle and rinse the remaining petals with water. After that, you can chop it up. Once your water is boiling, add the flower petals. Get one or two eggs and pour them into the pot. Then just add some sesame oil and salt to adjust the flavor. I learned this very simple method from a friend, and this was my first time eating this flower soup. I felt that the petals were relatively sticky. The taste was still good with a light floral aroma. I think that this thick texture is suitable for sweet soups. I would love to make a sweet soup with uh, snow fungus, lotus seeds, or red dates. All right, in this video, we briefly introduced night blooming cereals and shared our experience of growing it and using the blossom to make a delicious flower soup. We hope that this video has been useful to you. If you have any further questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.